Well, the cost of transportation will go up due to green initiatives, and you will pay for it. Will it help climate change? Nobody knows. Nobody's been able to prove that, but they're throwing you different elements and saying, hey, we're going to change things up. It's going to get a heck of a lot more expensive. You're going to pay for it. We can't prove that it's better than anything else we've got for the earth, but hey, let's give it a try because this is a globalist agenda. This is from the Telegraph this week. What they're saying is that middle income families will be priced out of air travel by 2050. And sorry, that's the way it goes because of net zero initiatives. Uh, did we all decide on that? We did not. Do we know that this is better for the planet? We do not. They're just saying we're going to do this. And here is why. Because of a sustainable uh, initiative for sustainable aviation fuel. They're calling it SAV. What they're saying is that because of that, all of these air travel, uh, all these plane ticket Prices basically will go up. This week, Virgin announced that it would impose a green levy to cover the cost of SAF, SAF or SAV, um, SAF, sorry. That's what it is, uh, which is currently two to three times the cost of kerosene. Now, Virgin is saying that they're going to put this new price tag on your plane tickets. Lufthansa already said that they think that prices will go up, too. A spokesperson for the German airline said that this would cover part of the steadily rising additional costs of SAF. And they think... Basically, this is not market forces at work because nobody is demanding it. The government's demanding it. So the government will have to subsidize it. Uh, and again, they're saying that um, this is going to cost you a lot more. Now, we covered this last September when the CEO of Lufthansa admitted that going green would require the airlines to use up to half of Germany's electricity. So not at all green then. So in order to make the fuel that the government tells them that they must use with no data saying that that fuel is better or worse, they're going to need half of the electricity in Germany, whereas Germans already have rising electric electricity costs. But we're going to take it all. Uh, in fact, they said he said uh, that we would need around half of Germany's uh, fuel uh, electricity to do this. And he says, from today's point of view, it won't work to even have the availability of the quantities that are demanded us, not to mention the high costs that are in the end, the passenger will have to bear. So that is, in fact, the case. Uh, now, he again, he said this in response to the Refuel EU initiative, which is a mandate that vehicles in the EU use this SAF and reduce practices that contribute to pollution, they say, with a minimum target of using 70% SAF by 2050. Uh, and I, we don't really know like what they've done in terms of, like, is this fuel better? Is it good for the engine of the aircraft? Does it prolong or shorten the life of the aircraft itself? Is it safe? We don't have that information. They're just saying, well, it's not a fossil fuel, so it's got to be better. Uh, how, even though we have showed you what we just had on the screen, this study was a 2017 Princeton study about synthetic gas from China, showed that synthetic gas might burn cheaper inside a house, but it could increase CO2 emissions because it's really hard to make it from recycled materials because SAF is used from, say, recycled cooking oils or recycled animal fats. And you can't just take all those things and put them in a Mr. Fusion like in Back to the Future, no, you need to create brand new. This is not how this is done, you guys. This is an idea of what we thought might happen, but instead, we don't have this. We can't just dump stuff in, recycled stuff. In fact, it's highly synthetic and processed, and there are not many plants around the world that do it, and we don't know if it's better yet. It's just, again, not fossil fuel. So forget the fact that we have not even proven that fossil fuel is causing climate change on global warming. Those models have not been agreed upon yet. We're just doing these things to make it more expensive and harder for us. Now, again, market forces are not working this out. Instead, it's just government regulation. And uh, here is what transportation experts have to say, that right now SAF only covers 0.2% of global jet fuel, and they just 
can't do it without the help of the government. Now, this industry spokesperson said that the switch to cleaner jet fuel will have a big impact on the cost of flying. He says, we know that decarbonization is going to be very expensive and cost trillions, in fact, and this is creating a stalemate in the industry. So, of course, they have to rely on the government. What this means then for the shrinking middle class is that forget your vacation to anywhere that you're dreaming about. Nope. You're going to do a vacation in your backyard with a tent because they do not want you to travel. Uh, And it will. So what they're worried about is the domino effect that this has, not just on air travel, but what about the places that rely on tourism, the taxes that that raises for these places like a small Caribbean island? Well, you can't come here, middle class, only wealthy people, certainly not lower class. So how are they going to then work that out as it leads to an economic collapse and a domino effect will again the government's going to have to get involved they're saying that this will mean higher prices for passengers and uh that the middle class middle income families will just be priced out of the sky for long haul and premium destination think the caribbean or southeast asia just know you can't go there you maybe could have with natural market forces now saved for a airline ticket, but you cannot now. So they said they may have to have workarounds such as tax subsidies, government involvement. So you'll pay for it. And what will we get? Will we get cleaner skies? Who the heck knows? They're just doing it because they think that you want it or the governments want to do it or whatever the heck. So let us know what you think of that. Yeah, they've, I mean, well, they clearly want us in 15-minute cities, right? The biggest carbon footprint, if you wanted to eliminate it, like that yeah. would be the thing, even though there's no evidence that that's leading to any kind of global warming, right? Again, it's your to your point, that's the biggest footprint. So all of the criticism of all these private jets, they fly into Davos, they fly all around to these different locations. If you want to really start and not be a hypocrite, you should stop flying your private jets around. Right, or right? like see how, how far they go on sustainable fuels because... Are they paying for sustainable fuels? Is Bill Gates putting that in his jet, given that it's only available at a 2.2% of the fuel that's available? So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of hypocrisy, but they're saying just you just don't get this. You don't get it. The upper class, they'll they'll sort of pay for the additional price, but we just won't have this population traveling uh, and the sacrifice is on you. I mean, we have a shrinking middle class as it is. Uh, so it, it harkens back to what Donald Trump said in his acceptance speech at the RNC is that these parties are saying, we want you to have less. We want you, to, your, your ambitions are too high. You shouldn't be thinking that this is the life you should lead. Uh, and where he's saying, I want you to have more. So we'll see if he actually means it because the globalist talking point right now is have less. Uh, Someone brought up a great point in the piece we did on Monday on the Paris Olympics that, you know, they're asking the athletes to not eat meat, use green transportation, sleep on these sustainable beds. They're basically torturing them and saying, this can be a green Olympics by you having less. And someone in our comment section said, that's what they want to put on the rest of us. They're showing us what they have planned for us, which is a less convenient life, which means that the economy shrinks. So, uh, this is a clear agenda. It's up to us to decide whether we accept it or not. We don't really have a choice because the air, governments are man, putting this on air travel and the airlines are saying, OK, we have no choice. We're going to have to do this and pass on the cost to consumers. The only choice we have in the matter is to vote out politicians who talk about this crap. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> that's the only way I see it. Or who align themselves with the World Economic Forum. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. All these people that were like the young World Economic Forum people like Justin Trudeau and mm-hmm. all of these people who, you know, you literally can go to their website and see the people that are, are approved by the World Economic Forum. Right. Throw these people out.